Good morning. Here we are, part eight. You can tell that we're getting close. Whoops, sorry, Kaya. Roof is done. Trim is all on, except for the front door. I also forgot to mention we still have the handrails to do. We'll do a little handrail. But today is siding day. I'm going to try to get it all sided. I don't know if I can get it all in a day or not. Give it a shot. See how much Kaya helps us. All right, so there's one, one way you can tell when the project's getting near the end. Uh, let me show you. It's two trash cans full of wood and uh, debris, cardboard from unwrapping things. That's a good indicator of how close we're getting to finishing. Okay, so let's get to siding. So I'm cutting, I, I measure, we're doing a <laughs> complete sentence, please. So I'm doing the, the back wall right now, cutting them all ahead. These have been primed. These are from other jobs that have been painted before. So I'm going to paint over them. But for now, I'm going to cut, the, uh, cut them all. I set up a stop, just a sheetrock screw at the end because the measurement's the same all the way up through. He's been stacked out under my overhang for five years. <laughs> this is the, the body the, of the, what we're going to paint. This is undoubtedly the thickest paint I've ever, ever seen. <laughs> what is it? Valspar Signature Interior Paint and Primer. So we're going to paint those clapboards now. Let those be drying while I cut some more. I have to, I have to make sure I get everything up high away from what Kaya can reach. She is a super active dog, <laughs> aren't you, Kaya? Yes, you are. There it is, the first bit of white. I was impressed when I, when I painted this soffit, how well it covered. I'm going to have some, <clears throat> some red clapboards that we'll be uh, painting. be interesting to see if that covers in one coat. It might take two. I have my staining racks outside, but they're currently frozen into the ground. So I'm just doing a few at a time. May end up having to wait for them to dry. <clears throat> we had talked earlier, or I had talked, <laughs> uh, of how long it would take to actually build the entire playhouse. And I had estimated around 48 hours of labor. And this is, this, and on average, I'm running about three hours of actual labor per video. So this is part seven. It should be at the end of this, I'll be at 21 hours of labor. And I think, I think we'll be pretty well under the 48. The materials have run a little bit more, of course. That's just the way it goes. There were some items that I hadn't um, figured in that I had to pick up. When I, so, so probably <clears throat> around $2,300 in materials for this project. That would be, um, if I had to go out and buy these clapboards, I, I put them in the budget. I think these are somewhere around 90 cents per linear foot. 
Kai is just waiting <clears throat> for a drop of paint to fall so she can rub her body in it. She got it. I thought I had the, uh, I thought all the trim was dry, so I let her out and she brushed up against it and got her coat all green. Boy, this paint really covers well. I really like that. Oh, my first bit of... No, I had some on here. Oh, well. My dad used to wear those white painter's pants, a white shirt. He was professional, I'll tell you what. <clears throat> it, worked, <clears throat> it worked for him painting one... What? Who's my voice? <clears throat> one summer with both my brothers... So there was the four of us, and we would go out painting houses and so on. And my brothers were a little bit mischievous, hard to believe. I mean, not me. <laughs> they would love to, like you'd have a, a paintbrush and a bucket, and they would just love to paint the back side of the paintbrush so that of yours so that when you went to pick it up you'd get paint all over your hands and that was all fun until until dad picked up your paintbrush with paint on it so we'd have to be talking about that for a little bit <laughs> or painting the underneath of a ladder rung oh that's a classic <clears throat> That's a good one. Kaya, no. She really wants to bite my paintbrush roller. Of course, on my job site, we never, never messed around. We were always serious. Okay. I guess I'll cut some more clapboards. I'll cut as many ahead as I can. I'll have to find a place to, to set them so they can dry. I'm going to trim out this door while I'm waiting for some clapboards to dry. And so what I want to do, I'll, I'll have to rip a piece of one by stock. I'm going to bring it in half an inch. I'll bring it in half an inch all the way around so that when the door is, the door will be on the inside, when it closes, it will close against that trim. So. Current height of the of the header is 56 and a half, so I'll cut two pieces at 56, one there and one there. This one I will rip to two and a half inches instead of three and a half. This one I'll leave that a full three and a half. That will match over here, as well as this is kind of beefed up with a one by four, and then this rip, and so on. So. 56 inches and 56 so we always want to try to get four good edges if it's possible this one has some wane right here where it's missing so I'll use this one on the left side of the doorway because I'm going to rip it two and a half inches wide. I'll be ripping this two and a half inches wide. in half an inch so the door will sit against that and same over here now I'll cut a top piece I believe I'll paint this right in place and of course I'll keep Kaya away one two 
I'll make sure that it's a half inch. So I'm going to measure over, you know, I think I'll put a nail right there. Kaya. Kaya really wants to come over here. And 26 and 5 sixteenths. So I'll do the same down here. 26 and 5. So painting clapboards. These these uh, were all primed, which is nice. They're uh, covered both sides. I'm having to, I, I I don't have much room in here. The playhouse kind of filled filled up the area, but. As soon as I get these uh, primed, I think I have two more sessions like this. Then I'll have enough of the clapboards stained or painted. It's not stained, it's paint. It's an acrylic water base. So I'm kind of just, I'm tucking these wherever I can find room in, inside the shop here. I think I can do two more and then I'll let those dry. Um, I've been cutting some ahead. I'll put these over on the chop saw. By golly, I might be able to get one more up on, whoop, on the chop saw. I think I can. So I'll paint two more, let those dry, and then uh, I'll be right back to do putting siding on the playhouse really getting close to finishing this baby up. I'm ready to put the siding on now, so I'm going to mark four inch increments, just so it's easy to, I'll put it on there, and then I'll know, I'll use, sometimes I'll use a spacer block. I don't think I'm going to do that. If I just make four inch marks all the way up, that will work great. And uh, let's see, just for a, an example, Kai is going to help me here. So this is a, a scrap piece. This is where it's going to start. The clapboard is five and a half inches wide. So I know we know that that is the top of the clapboard. The next one will be, it'll be a four inch reveal. It'll be up about four inches. So in order to do that, if I do from here up, from the top of this clapboard up, four inches. Right there. We'll have the first one. All set right there. Then the next one will be up four inches at that mark so we have a four inch reveal so I'm just going to put a nail right here and I'll make marks every four inches up so I have that one so this is where math skills come in good 4 8 12 16 <laughs> excuse me 20 24 <laughs> and my able assistant Okay, I'm ready to nail these on. So I've made marks, vertical lines at every stud, so I know where to nail, so that we don't just have nails coming through the sheathing for little kids to get their head, their hands, uh, or whatever, to get cut, get poked, get stuck. Okay. Right there, the first one. Thank <laughs> you. 
One interesting thing among many is people have asked about nailing at the bottom of the clapboards. You have to do that with wood clapboards because if, if you don't, they're going to cup and move around. Uh, with like a hardy plank, hardy board, it's nailed up at the top so that it's a blind nail. You don't see that uh, you don't see the nail because the next one, next clapboard would come down over that. That's designed not to to uh, cup, warp, twist, run at the heel, whatever. <laughs> Where it comes up and changes angle, I've already cut this one. So it was the same length as all of these. Uh, I measured in, measured up four inches for this one. And then from here up, it was three and a quarter inches, both sides. And the angle, because it's a 31.6 degree roof, the reverse, uh, it, to, to figure this angle, um, it's what's left over from 90 degrees. If you subtract 31.6, puts it down to 59 or 58.4 degrees on a chop saw. If you can't cut that on a chop saw, if, if your saw won't go that sharp, what I've done in the past is I've come up against the fence so that the saw is actually this way and change it to 31.6. You can do it either way. It's hard to do that with a long piece, but this, this is a, anyway, my saw was able to do that. So, let's see. All right. And then onwards and upwards, and I, I meant to take a measurement. It, it works better to take this measurement for the next one before you nail this up, and I forgot. So now I've got to reach inside there, I've got to get my tape measure. Anyway, we'll just continue up to finish the end. You can see right here, my saw is set at 58, 58 and a half for all intents and purposes. A, a, a tenth of a degree is pretty hard to, to hit. So, just gonna pull one across. Going to cut that angle. Then I'll measure from there to the other side. My chop saw doesn't go this way to that 59.64 degrees. So I'll leave it going this direction. If I just turn the clapboard over, I know the measurement's 63 and a quarter. So I'm just cutting it, that way we get the angle going correctly. So now I'll measure what I'll do, the way I usually do it, especially if, they're, if we're a two or three man crew on the job site. We know it's going to be a four inch reveal on each end. So now I can just measure this one in theory, without even going over there, we can cut all of these. So that's uh, 50 and an eighth will be the next one. I am going to go over just to try it and see if it fits. Want to come along? All right, let's see. I, I made a mark on this clapboard on both ends. Perfect. So I know I can cut the rest of these all the way up through, and then I'll just nail them on one time. I've cut all the pieces, and they should, I hope, fit perfectly, yeah.
One side done, three to go. Here we go with side two. Okay, this one we've got to notch. This window has a built-in J-channel, so that will slip in be behind there. Now I just need to get a measurement so I know how high up to go. So we're five, five and seven eighths minus four. So we're going to leave five and seven eighths minus four, an inch and seven eighths. Cut that out. Probably use a jigsaw to cut that out. So we're going to cut a, a U out of this basically. And we want one and seven eighths. So I'll just draw a line across so I'll know where to cut with the jigsaw. And we have these marks, so I'll just cut that this way with with the chop saw. Could have used used the table saw. I just didn't. I guess I'm lazy. <laughs> okay. Let's see if that fits. Snug fit. My kingdom for a hammer. Here's one. <laughs> it lines up with my marks real well. Okay, I'm going to cut one that goes all the way to the end here because I don't think I can get it to go up in and fit over that. So it'll be two pieces, one here and then one the rest of the way. All right, you can see I cut out that notch. Let's see if it fits in here. to do one tiny rip all the way across the top. So we'll do, I'll cut the other side and nail those on. Rip this at three and a half inches for this top piece. Huh, don't even have to nail that, hardly. <laughs> <laughs> that looks great. Okay, over onto the far side. There's not much room on this side, so I didn't bother to video it. It's the same. It was everything, everything was the same as the other side. So this side's done. On to the front. On the front side. So we have to start out with a, a shorter one because to line up with the clapboards on this side so that when, when you look from out here, they're in alignment all the way across. And it will be, you can't really see it over there, but it will be. And it 
cut this notch out of here. piece of siding. <laughs> wow, 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 wow. All right, we are done siding. That finishes all four sides. Maybe I'll just run you around and take it just to see every side. The last two things to do is the Dutch door and the handrails. So I think we ought to get on to the next thing. First, I'll, I'll show you around here. And we'll go up and take a look at the roof. Came out very nice. You can see the siding down there all done. I need more room, I tell you. And of course, that this was the first, first that we did. And that was the second wall that we did. I like that. It looks really good. Thanks for watching. Also, uh, people have asked, what am I going to do with this thing once I'm done? It's going out there, and I'll park it. Uh, try to keep it covered a little bit. I am going to sell it. Uh, I had made made a playhouse in my house for the grandkids that they use quite a bit. They, every time they come over, they like to, to hang around with that. So this is, has got to go. It's a, a pretty good investment for me, so I, I can't just afford to hang on to it. It looks like it's going to be in the neighborhood, if, if I sell it uh, uh, completed, $4,000, somewhere in there. The labor came in a little bit less, I believe it will. I, I only have a little bit more to do with the Dutch door and the railing. So, all right. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you later.